Well, hello, and welcome to the uh, first unit for the Interpretive Exhibit Planner's Toolbox. Uh, I put this course together for a couple of reasons. One reason is I see so many really lousy exhibits uh, in museums and nature centers and parks. Uh, they look pretty. They're expensive. Uh, but one of the things that, that I've seen is they don't actually accomplish anything. People look at them and don't remember anything. So why would you want to spend thousands of dollars on exhibits and get nothing in return for the money you spent? So the kind of exhibits that we work on planning are outcome-based and objective-based exhibits. Our philosophy is if you spend $10,000 on an exhibit, you should get over the life of that exhibit at least $20,000 in benefits from that exhibit. Uh, the benefits being uh, the objectives for the exhibit being accomplished at a pretty high level of, of success. Um, and in unit two, we'll talk about objectives because we found that a lot of exhibits don't even have objectives. They just kind of happen. People kind of sit around and saying, well, gee, we have a whole collection of dishes. Let's do an exhibit on dishes, irregardless of whether the visitors are even interested in exhibits. So uh, for unit one, the main thing is to get, get you used to the uh, interpretive planning process and the interpretive planning model. Uh, the interpretive planning model we use for planning everything, and we use it for planning uh, exhibits. And on the uh, unit one sheet, there is a picture of the model of interpretation, and I've given you a brief description. Also in the readings that I've given you, uh, is more about the model too. Essentially what the model says, if we're going to plan exhibits, one of the very first things you have to have are detailed objectives that the exhibit's supposed to accomplish. Again, we'll spend more time on objectives in Unit 2. Uh, the second thing is we need to have a clear theme and sub-theme that the exhibit is supposed to illustrate. Most exhibits don't have themes, they just have subjects. So. Interpretive exhibits have, have a theme. And the third thing is the exhibits need to be designed with some idea as to who the audience is. Will the exhibits need to be permanent or will they be seasonally changing? Uh, what language will we use? And what types of materials, what types of uh, communication approaches will we need to use for the exhibits? And that gets us to the media box. <coughs> That's where you figure out just, just what kinds of stuff you want to use for the exhibit. Then we kind of figure out implementation and operations. Implementation and operations is what's everything going to cost and how long is it going to take you know, the, to, to pull this off. Uh, on average, and I'm using $2,015 terms, uh, exhibits are about $400 plus or minus per square foot of floor space. Now, out of, out of that, let's say you have a dollar for your exhibits. Out of that dollar, about 25% is the design fee. Uh, about 15% is uh, uh, delivery and installation. And so, and then, then there's usually a 10% kind of a contingency plan. So out of the dollar, you really have about 60 cents that actually buys actual exhibits. The rest goes into the design fee and goes into delivery and installation. Uh, so with, with those kinds of things in mind, we want, want you to really be aware that if you're going to plan exhibits for the money you spend you know, to get something back. So that's, where, that's the implementation and operations component where you're figuring out all the details of just how you're going to do this exhibit project. Usually most exhibit projects take a year, maybe two years uh, to happen. And then there's a box that says evaluation. Uh, we really like the pre-test uh, exhibit mock-ups. Um, in a study I did a couple of years ago, I found out that almost 18% of exhibits in a new science museum were creating negative learning. What that means is that on the pre-test, when people interacted with the questions and the objectives that that exhibit is supposed to accomplish, um, they already had an 80% success rate in having the right answer. 
But in the post-test for some of the exhibits, they went from 80% to 60% and even maybe 50%, which means they had the right idea of going in, but when they saw the exhibit, it made them dumber and it gave them the wrong impression of what that subject matter was about. And essentially, it created negative learning. It took knowledge that they had and it confused them and it made them think that the right answer that they thought was actually right was the wrong answer. So we're going to talk about the importance of pre-testing uh, and post-testing uh, exhibits. Uh, the box that says the interpreter, that's you. Uh, we each have our own way of doing things, our own styles, our, our own uh, ways of doing research and whatnot. So one of the important things in this course is, is, is that you develop your own individual style. I'm giving you a toolbox, but I'm not telling you how to, how to build things per se uh, with it. I'm giving you tools to add to your own uh, way of uh, planning and design. These are all ways, uh, by the way, that actually work. Uh, we've used this process for about 35 years. Uh, we've gotten rid of the things that didn't work and added and expanded things that did work. So that there's not a right or wrong planning process. There are simply various degrees of successful planning processes. And the ones that we use <clears throat> based on all the years that we've been doing it are indeed uh, uh, is a successful way of doing uh, exhibits. Uh, the one box that says manager of reality, those are things that we all but have no control over. How much space we have, how much time we have, how much money we have, how the contracting process works how to write an RFP or an RFQ. We'll explain what those are at the end. Uh, so manager realities are, are things we try to figure out at the very beginning because those are things that uh, affect the exhibit planning process uh, in, in all kinds of ways. Even those things like uh, people going on vacation during the critical review process. So unit number one really focuses on the model of interpretation. Uh, I've uh, given you a, a number of, of other readings as well to add to it. And then when we get on to unit number two, we're going to start having you begin to write objectives for uh, exhibits. And if you're working on an actual exhibit project, then you can actually write the exhibits for the project uh, you're working on. I can review them. Remember that when we talk about objectives, objectives are measurable. Goals are not measurable. So we work in the realm of learning behavioral and emotional objectives. Without objectives, you really can't plan and design exhibits. So that's what Unit 1 will be about to get you started. Uh, and then when I've gotten the materials from you, from uh, our assignment on Unit 1, um, we'll get going on Unit 2. And of course, you can email me, you can, you can call me, you can Skype me at any time so we can discuss uh, the, the, the planning process if you have any questions. So I hope you uh, enjoy Unit 1. I hope you are, are already familiar with the model of interpretation. But if you've been designing interpretive exhibits and you're not familiar with the model of interpretation, then it's probably good that you meet. And so I think that's about it. I'll see you at uh, Unit number 2. Have a good one.